Hello and welcome again to the new Sligo show, you could call it. For any of you that are watching, you've obviously found our new Facebook page. And I suppose just to give an explanation, we had a little bit of uh, a headache during the week where for some reason our page got deleted and we were on to Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg and the whole lot and they just wouldn't let us have it back. So we're still going to try and get it back and maybe we can join the two pages. But for now, we're here. Thanks to everyone. We had over 300 people like it in only a few hours today, the new page. And always remember we're on Instagram and YouTube as well. So just to say thanks and explain a little bit about what happened. Another thing to explain as well, someone during the week asked us, and how much is it to get mentioned on the show? Uh, it's free. There's no budget. There's no sponsorship here. So if you ever have something you want plugged in the show, send us a message anytime. This is, as we always say, this is a hobby. It's a bit of fun. We're, lo we're loving promoting all the lovely people and places and things to do in Sligo. So long, remain, long may it remain that way. So this week, as always, if your news sport and entertainment we have a lovely feature with a local business uh, we've Edel there from all things natural at market cross so we'll be showing you a little clip from her lovely shop later on but first and i'm very excited as a fan of comedy myself to have a local comedy legend mr john Kaliri on the show with us here and he's already messing <laughs> Hi. Welcome, John. How are you doing? Fine. This is kind of odd. I'm just interviewing you like a chat yeah, show yeah. now, where yeah, we normally just have a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that we're in the, the bowels of a hotel as well. It's, kind it's, of, it's a bit surreal. Yeah. No, we're not supposed to reveal that. Okay. This is a high spec studio. It's a high spec studio. The yeah. Fact that we're in a high spec studio. <laughs> Makes me think back to the old days when we used to be in studio. Oh uh, yeah, oh my God, yeah. It feels, seems like a long time ago. <laughs> so obviously, John, I know you a few years, but I suppose I don't even know an awful lot about the background and the growing up. And I'm sure some of our audience have seen you in many shows, but maybe don't know the background. So tell us a little bit about growing up in Ballasadere. Ballasadere is brilliant. Okay, oh, I love it. You're with the tourist board out there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I grew up there. Uh, you know, it's a it's a town in the west of Ireland. What more can you say? Okay, just generic uh, town. Generic town, and uh, it's actually quite busy nowadays it's very very traffic heavy it's like mm. lots and lots of trucks going up and down building new roads going to faraway places <laughs> but um yeah i grew up there and um i was lucky enough to play sport when i was younger so that was something to do otherwise it was a little bit uh you know in terms of stuff to get on with mm. a little bit dry that way but sport was good and we had a youth club when we were kids and Got to meet other youth clubs and stuff, so it was a bit of action, a bit of, you know, fun. Action as in drama or theatre, or action as in just chasing, fun. chasing, yeah, just getting, chasing girls. Just getting into trouble, I suppose. <laughs> getting into trouble. Little, bit, little bits of trouble. And so, and I left, but I kind of left there when I was first, when I was about 18. And then, again, I came back, I was in Galway for about a year. And then I, when I came back, I stayed maybe till I was 19 or... Yeah, over 19 anyway, and then I went to London. After London? So I was in London then, then I was back in Sligo, then I was back in London, and then I was back in Sligo, then I was in Dublin for 25 years. So Oh, tw oh I didn't know you were in Dublin yeah, that long. That was oh, right. that long, yeah. And London, was that, uh, was it this world of comedy, or was it no, just random? Back it was over comedy, but there was no money for it. Yeah. Because we were working on, I was everyone was a comedian, but... Yes, yes, yes. So I was working on building sites mostly. Oh, and, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 1920 that age group sort of thing yeah, and you mentioned sports there what sports yeah, would you I do when you were young for a Ballastadere United when I was a kid ok so that was um, your love from about 12 up into my mid 20s maybe maybe 25 26 okay. I kind of stopped playing then and I was in Dublin the year after so I didn't play for any clubs in there Dublin you would only there. keep it the homegrown team I kind of did keep it to the home team yeah, yeah so yeah, I didn't yeah. really kind of branch out plus I was too busy drinking pints for playing football. So, well, well, 25 is a dangerous yeah. age. Yeah, you kind of well, discover, yeah. God, this pint crack is actually, yeah. for some, can I mean, be good Football's fun. getting in the way. <laughs> it's getting in the way. Mm. People waking you up on Sunday mornings <laughs> to go and play football. Yeah, Sundays, there should be no sports on Sundays. Really. No. Anyways, uh, go back to, as you said, school, college, or travel. were you always the joker at home or in school? Or Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I guess in, at home, definitely. Uh, in school, not so much in primary school, maybe definitely secondary school, especially when you're going to secondary school and everyone's, I was quite young going to secondary school, mm. I was about 11 still, I hadn't been wow. turned 12 till I was a month or two into the, or a month into the year. So um, it was a way of getting around things when you, when you could get, be a smart arse. Uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of people, people say this, yeah. That yeah, they, people they, are bigger To avoid than trouble you. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so there was a bit of that, definitely. Did you get popular because of being funny, or was it avoid? Or sorry, was it that you caused yourself trouble with teachers as well? Well, there was a bit of that too. Bit of that, there, was, yeah. there was kind of you kind of got left alone if you if you kind of made people laugh, whereas yeah. you could get picked on a bit if you were just quiet, quiet. Whereas yeah. if you were 
kind of chirpy or something, then you could impersonate people or something, or you could do that. I could do that with a few teachers and stuff. And once you get a laugh, you kind you're, of keep, you're keep, safe. Keep, you're kind of yeah. safe. Yeah. No, a good friend of mine who's an entertainer yeah. said the exact same thing. Yeah. It just got him through and avoided sometimes bullying. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny. Like people, well, there was bullying in part in the yeah. school in the first year. I remember, and then it kind of the comedy took over. And right, and that bullying, one, yeah. The bullying abated slightly. It's, it's gas, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah. Shows you how it yeah. can work. And did you do anything in those youth clubs regard? Like, were you, were you a performer at a young age? Some people uh, don't really No, I was quite it. shy, no. actually. I didn't, couldn't, wouldn't be able to do it when I was younger. You mm. know, I was, um, so maybe, you know, a few drinks in then, later on, late teens especially, you know, you get bit bit performery then don't you yeah yeah well start, i think everyone gets yeah perform, even if they're not good at it yeah you start, <laughs> especially if they're not good at it <laughs> yeah you start so. hopping around the place and shouting and roaring and, yeah, yeah you know trying to be funny and sometimes succeeding and so when you weren't drinking and you started performing in a proper manner like what age did that start to kind of develop that was i was late enough with that as well compared to the way a lot of people start so i was 30 over 30 anyway I started something, I did something in Sligo here with a couple of friends of mine, Rob, uh, <coughs> Kill, Killian and Dylan Foley. <clears throat> Back in the late 90s, we had a band, a kind of a band, which we did sketches in between the songs as well. Um, right. We did that for a, a summer, I think, in 1999. It's a bit like Billy Connolly, wasn't it? That's what he started, wasn't he? He yeah. was a singer, but he started doing but more. We kind of, we set it up, so we set it up to be comedy and the songs were just sort of, incidental to the, fillers. To, the, to the sketches and the songs were kind of funny songs anyway okay so we did a bit of that and the band we were in kind of get, got bigger and bigger we ended up with people playing bongos and <laughs> didgeridoos and stuff and anything yeah. just to add, yeah. to, add to the crowd it was quite 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 good fun and we just did it for a summer and then i didn't do anything for about two three maybe three years after that about 2003 i started kind of taking it seriously Okay. And I uh, started trying to do it. Okay, you felt uh, I can yeah. actually... Well, I felt, I'd, I felt I didn't know whether I could, Yeah. but I felt I needed to uh, give it a go. It must be difficult in comedy as to go, I'm funny. It must be, the, yeah. as everyone said, it is the hardest kind of performance thing to go up on the stage and go, I'm funny. You know, where, yeah. Whereas like yeah. someone acting can act a character, but you're going, no, no, I, I, well, I mean, you might yeah. think you're funny necessarily, but you have to go but up and saying go... saying you're funny to yourself kind of never helps either. Yeah, as as yeah, concerned. yeah. You know, I'm afraid works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. afraid. I better do something to make these people laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. afraid. Gives you that adrenaline rush. Yeah, forces yeah, you yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, perform yeah. better. And, like, would you describe yourself, I suppose you've done stand-up, but you've been in so many different things. Mm -hmm. Would you describe yourself more as a writer or a comedian or an actor? Or do you even think about that kind of definition? Well, I kind of got to think about that a bit more um, in this pandemic thing. Mm. Because before... I would have been performing all the time. I would have been like working three nights a week, maybe some corporate stuff during the day, depending on what time of year it was, maybe some stuff on set, maybe a sketch for somebody, maybe something on radio. Yeah. So in, in terms of creating content for that, there's a bit of writing. But to me, the performance thing is the first thing. Okay, that's your preference. So, yeah, so the, it's not the preference, it's just the way, it, the way I write is by performing. Okay. So I found this period kind of difficult to actually motivate to get. Okay, because you done weren't going to be able to perform because I such. couldn't put put it anywhere. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, would you prefer to sit in a room writing, or no? As you said, definitely. But, but would you rather write something you or perform something you've written, or do you love someone give me a script? Great, no pressure about writing. Just go in and perform. No, I'd like to. I'd like to do something I'd written. Okay. Or I'd written what's collaborated on with somebody else because that's my favorite part of the. When you say, "Am I?" Uh, when you ask me, "Am I a writer or a comic?" I would say a comic first, and I'm a good collaborator. Okay. So I'll, if there's all the stuff we worked on, Savage Eye, Irish Pictorial, mm. um, not the Hardy books, because the guys had written that, I just played a part there. Yeah. But the other stuff, and the stuff I did with Today FM, that was kind of collaborative. Okay. So it's all brainstorming and picking up stuff off other people and using bits that everyone brings, and there's no real ego about it, and you just put a thing together, and it's... It works the way it works. So, so the likes of Today FM, <coughs> like, is that like some of the skits we see, or is it like to help a presenter to do a piece, or what? Is you, were, you, were you writing a set sketch within a show all yeah. the time? Okay. Yeah. So. I wrote for Matt Cooper's program. Right. For about four years. Okay. I did two years with Bernard. Bernard from Bridget and Emmon. Bernard, Bernard Roche. Roche, yeah. So Bernard brought me into that first in 2006. We did two years of writing two sketches a week for Matt's program, Satire. Oh, okay. We had two characters. There were cops. 
<laughs> we wrote stuff around them. It yeah. was straight man, funny man. I was the straight man. It was okay, kind of like, yeah, like, like, like Garda Ted. Mm -hmm. So it was like Ted and Dougal, only they're cops. Yeah, yeah, A bit yeah. like that. And um, so we did that for two years and that was a collaboration. And then two years after we finished that, they, because Bernard had moved on to radio, he was in iRadio, and That's I think right, he was in yeah. 2FM as well. He was eventually, after that. Yeah, yeah. So they asked me back to try and do one sketch a week for them, just myself. So I did that. Okay. Did you find years. it more difficult than on your own? I found it difficult in the beginning, but yeah. then I got a way of writing it and I got a way of um, just sussing out what to write about and sussing out, you know, just keep keeping an eye on news and stuff. So you could, I could spend five days going, what am I going to write for yeah. Cooper's program? And then something will happen on day six in the news. And it's like it's instant, there. instant, like, you yeah, know, yeah, it could, I, it could that, be that quick. That was one thing that was written here was I was saying, like, you know, is, do you find the writing process long or drawn out? I always visualize you as being more of an ad lib. Give me something I could write a sketch of five minutes now with that little. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. But the best stuff, the stuff we did with the stuff that Dave did, and I was working with Dave and Patrick and Dermot and everyone mm. else on the Savage Eye, that stuff was was kind of percolated over a long time. Yeah. You yeah. know, especially as each series went on with the Savage Eye, it went longer and longer. So the first series was about nine months, six to nine months of writing and getting the stuff ready and then shooting it and whatever. Then it went to sort of 10 months. The last one we did for, the last Savage Eye we did lasted, um, I'd say about 14 months. Really? And that was a team in a room? Like, what, are we talking how many room. hours a week or it was like going to you're an office job? Meet, yeah, yeah, you're talking meetings script meetings twice a week, three times a week, and then writing the stuff in between. Nice. So we spent ages at that. Okay, you did show, uh, like I did a comedy course with you there yeah. last year. I mean, like, by the way, I thought you were, uh, we'll go back to the ad lib thing. Every time one of us in the class was doing something, you were always able to add something immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, So you obviously have that great ad lib, quick thinking process. But in those shows, I imagine writing with David, like we all know David is this quirky guy. Yeah. But was it fun writing with him? Would, we oh, came, yeah. would he have a character and stick to it or would he be very, no, no, we'll listen to you or was it a bit of wow. each? <laughs> he's, he's very much <clears throat> a unique type of person yeah. and performer. So he would be, he would always stick to his guns. Sometimes he would, sometimes he would stick to his guns because you were sticking to your guns. Just for different He like, wouldn't agree with you just because you were saying something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if he liked it. Yeah, no, because I, I, so, I have met him and like, you can see yeah. that in him. Like, you know, just, just for different now, I yeah, just... I'm not going to agree with you. <laughs> Oppositional. But, yeah. uh, but a comedy genius as well, like... Yeah, yeah, very much Do you think so, the yeah. Savage Eye would ever be allowed to happen again, though? Oh, I think so. Do you think that would oh. RTE take it back or would it have to be more of an... I honor? don't know what, who'd... who'd uh, I don't know where to get commissioned, but I think there's a yeah. sp space for it there, yeah. especially yeah. now. Yeah, 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 I think there's definitely this, a space for it. This crack. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Well, as I said, we'll, uh, we'll just want to hear all that from you and we'll be talking a bit more about okay. performing and whatnot. Okay. And for now, thanks to John. And we're going to go to our news and our sport. Good evening and welcome to this week's news bulletin on the Sligo Show with me, Jessica Ferry. It's been making headlines everywhere this week, but I can promise you that this is a Love Island free zone. Making the news here this week, concerns have been raised as the number of COVID-19 cases across the county are on the rise, particularly in the Kalani and Kaluni areas, with the HSE saying it is likely that the Delta variant is here. Sinn Féin councillor Arthur Gibbons is the new mayor of Sligo Borough as he takes over from councillor Rosalind O'Grady. Councillor Gibbons paid tribute to frontline workers who worked throughout the pandemic in sometimes testing conditions. The Hawkswell Theatre reopened on Saturday with a special event involving local artists following what has been an incredibly difficult year for the arts industry. And organisers of Sligo Pride Festival say they are hopeful that this year's event will be hugely successful as the festival continues to gain momentum. You can, of course, read all of these stories and lots more in this week's The Sligo Champion newspaper, available in shops locally or you can subscribe to the digital edition on the website at sligochampion.ie.
Welcome to the weekly sports update with the Sligo Show. My name is Alana Canan and I'm going to bring you the headlines from the last week in sport across the county. Sligo Rovers got back to winning ways with a bang last Saturday with a 4-0 thrashing of Bohemians at the showgrounds, which sent them back joint top of the Airtricity Premier Division table alongside uh, Shamrock Rovers. Johnny Kenny went home with the match ball after netting a hat-trick with Ryan DeVries picking up the other goal of the game. And also in Rovers news, the club have laid claim to 19-year-old Grange native Seamus Keogh, who formerly played with Southampton and Cap in Ireland at underage levels. Elsewhere, Mayo secured a comfortable 3.23 to 12 point win over Tony McEntee's Sligo in Markovich Park on Saturday in what was their first championship clash since 2017. Um, after such a heavy defeat, the calls for a restructuring of divisions are running rampant in recent days, with McEntee himself talking of the obvious gulf in ability between the two sides. In rugby, Donica Byrne got his first international start this week as he was named a blindside flanker for Ireland's triumph versus Wales in the under-20s, while the 149th National Athletics Championships proved very successful for Sligo AC's Aoife Kilgallen as she was first to pass the line in the women's 5,000 metres. Uh, Chris O'Donnell was denied his four in a row in the senior men's code at the same competition as he was pipped to top spot by Killian Green in the 400 metre final. But he then went on to set a new PB and a Connacht 400 metre record in Spain just a few days later, finishing second behind the world record holder and also securing a time of 45.55, which is the third quickest time for the distance by an Irish athlete of all time. Finally, just as the show aired last week, it was announced that Dean Clancy had took the gold at the under-22 European Championships in Italy. The Sean McDermott boxer didn't even have to throw a punch in the end, as his opponent was a no-show, and therefore Clancy was uh, awarded the overall prize in the light, light welterweight decider. Over on Twitter, the 19-year-old thanked everybody for their support over the uh, recent weeks and that he was excited for what the future holds, alluding to uh, Paris 2024 with his hashtag. That's it for this week's sports wrap-up with me, Alana Canan. You can find more from me over on hersport.ie, The Final Whistle, and also the local media outlets. Uh, back to you in studio, Brendan. Thanks very much to Jessica and Alana with the news and sports. Great as always. So a few little comments coming in. We've uh, Tommy Stinson down here in Mayo. John, I believe you know him. Yeah, I know Tommy. He's, Tommy. He's enjoying it all the way from Mayo. Uh, we Jamie Gray has about... You went to college in yeah, DCU, yeah, you said, DCU, was it? Yeah. There you go now. So he's following you around. Keep an eye on what you're at. Mickey Murray there, a very quiet young man out in Strand Hill. He's saying he misses all those shows. I think we all do. That's what I'm saying. I it would be too. lovely. Well, I'm sure you imagine. I'm, I'm sure you might miss the creativity and the fun as well as yeah, yeah. it's obviously work yeah. as well, like you know. Yeah. But I think I think there's a huge uh, space for panel shows or more yeah. sketch shows in Ireland because I think Ireland's yeah. full of giddiness and, and stories yeah. like and different and characters like, yeah. so it'd be great and, to see them and absolute uh, catastrophic governments <laughs> which makes for good satire of course it does like, yeah. makes for, like, you have to it be, keeps people in a business I'd you say. have to because they're those guys and I'm sorry for interrupting you not at all but those guys do. haven't been checked yeah. I mean they haven't been checked by, by media I mean they I mean all through the the history of satire and comedy and then and maybe in Ireland a bit more lately you know you've you've had a chance to have a pop yeah you've had a chance to have a pop at governments um TC um whoever the kind of the the, the main people are in, yeah. in the news it's not happening now and I think that's missing there's, there's no yeah there's no that's way missing. to vent it out there's really no, like, yeah well there's no way to kind of balance out the and I, I think I, th- I think people I mean? aren't afraid now I mean on social media to equally question yeah. things yeah. now so I think a comedy sketch show oh great like yeah. we, we did a thing there for fun on Roadworks you know obviously yeah. you haven't talked about it, but yeah. like it was like a, a, an opening a door for everyone to go oh yeah god this is really really but like it was a bit of fun as well like mm. I suppose when you think back to the old days of politicians it's probably untouchable to do you know Charlie Haughey and those guys until Dermot Morgan probably was it well there was not all stuff before that like I mean yeah. that the th- show we did with uh, Barry the Irish Pictorial was a kind mm. of an homage to the original Pictorial Weekly. Ah, which was okay. A 70s Sorry, right. Program okay. With Frank Hall, who went in to satire about uh, the currency of the politics of that day. Right. So yes, I didn't. I, I actually didn't even know that. Yeah. That well, that thing was a kind of a. And that was brilliant. And Eleanor Tiernan's on it. Eleanor, and people yeah. thought some of her yeah. news reports were real. <laughs> oh yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen them, definitely check out Eleanor yeah. Tiernan's. Was they were, they were very funny. Like, so going back to we spoke about your writing, but come back to as regards comedy. When did you say, right, when would you say, okay, I really started getting gigs all the time? You know what I mean? When did that really become professional for you? Well, again, some luck there as well, because I started doing stand-up proper. And I'd say early 2003 was the when I kind of officially in my mind was the first foray into that. Mm. And then I was quite lucky at the time because right, right then, 
there wasn't that much happening, but there was a lot about to happen. Okay. So like there was a couple of clubs, the international, uh, the lounge was closed then. It had been closed for a few years, so there was no laughter lounge. There was the international, there was the Hepney, there was a few others dotted around. There was one or two. There was the Galway thing, the Cuba. Yeah, yeah. Um, which was the GPO first, then it became Cuba, and and what else? What else? Well, as Limerick had, you know, the the um, Dolans, Dolans, yeah, yeah. and Cork had City Limits, and apart from that, everything else was kind of a random. Yeah. But in 2003, there wasn't that many people doing it. There was still kind of a core group of people doing stand up. There wasn't that many new people coming up. Okay. So I, the group I came up with, like there was three or four of them that are still working, or maybe maybe a bit more than f maybe six people who I could name who are still working. But then Des Bishop's thing kind of took off the work experience show, and then the international went from a one night a week comedy club over a period of. Six months, maybe, maybe a year, became a four night a week comedy club. Like so, that sort of expanded that whole yeah. thing. So, so really it was the TV. You think really opened yeah, yeah. the window to go yeah. stand up comedy is is yeah. great. Like yeah, yeah, and people started kind of getting. And that, that, you're coming into what 2003, 2004. You're dead center of Celtic Tiger. Yes, where okay. people had money, people had disposable income, they wanted to go out. Yeah. Next thing you know, there's comedy clubs popping up here and there. Comedy becomes a thing. And I had gotten in a couple of years ahead of that. You were just on the, just, on the wave, just, just before luckily, it took just off. Just luckily. Yeah, yeah. And because in the years after, 2005, six, possibly when that last, uh, that recession kicked in that time, bank bailout and all that, there was a lot of people doing comedy and a lot of people coming up and a lot of people that couldn't even get a spot okay. in the inter or couldn't get a spot in the lounge because there were so many people clamouring for I can imagine. stage and then, time. And it didn't happen when I started, five years previously. Right. So kind of lucky that way. Yeah, yeah. So I had gotten in, you know, just a wee bit ahead of that. So that was lucky. So I started getting, I suppose, um, getting mobile as well. I got a car then about 2005. Hadn't been driving before that. And once you get a car, you're kind of mobile and you're getting more. You so getting, you were doing that circuit you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, and it just kicked off. And Art Centre kicked Limerick. off. The Art Centre here kicked off and the yeah. model. That kicked off in 2003. 2005, one in Carrick and Shannon kicked off. Then... Maybe a year later, you had Roscommon Art Centre, and mm -hmm. that became a circuit three nights. Wednesday night, True, yeah. Wednesday night in Roscommon. Imagine that. Wednesday night in Roscommon, people, a hundred people in Roscommon town going to comedy. Wednesday night in Roscommon, Thursday night in Carrick and Shannon, Friday night in Sligo. And that was every month, those three nights happened regardless of everything. Yeah. I was doing two sketches a week with Today FM with Bernard, and then all the other nights were filled up with International, International. Hapenny, Galway. Belfast, Limerick, uh, Wexford, Waterford, all everywhere. Yeah. So as you said, you were just there on the crest. Just on the crest. Just that thing. But obviously, off. and I would still say it to anyone, <coughs> you are for me as good as any stand-up comedian I've ever witnessed. And well, anyone that's you. come to any gigs we've done, and I'm not saying that because you're here, I could tell a hundred people that I've told it to. Uh, like, so you obviously didn't just get lucky by getting on the crest wave. You obviously were able to stay, stay afloat and do good. That people said we're going to go back to see him and we're going to rebook him. Like people don't rebook unless yeah. it works. Like you know. Well, I fell down plenty in the first couple of years, and mm. still, still do. Uh, Occasionally, but you know, it's a learning process. I can imagine. I you know, it's a hard. You learn if you if you <laughs> kind of fall heavy. Okay. You kind of figure out how to not do that again. Yes. Okay. Well, it is yeah. like anything, yeah. I suppose, yeah. isn't it? It's just, but yeah. as you said, it's probably a bit more vulnerable in a live comedy bit. with an yeah. audience waiting f for a laugh. So obviously, when you were on that crest of a wave, then all these shows, and I'm only going to name a few of them here. Obviously, we talked about the Savage Eye yeah. and Trial Weekly. The Hardy Box, Bridget Name, and then eventually, and then the Tommy Tiernan show, I suppose, is one of the more recent mm -hmm. ones. So, with all of those, was it like you were auditioning? Were you in no. a, Were you in the club of people no. that were writing and just mm -hmm. knew them? And just well, Dave and me were friends. Yeah. So Dave was doing a thing. With, Dave was doing a thing with. Uh, he was trying to make a pilot about his own life. Okay. Uh, I think he called it my stupid life or something. I can't remember what it was. But he made this pilot and he was spent a few quid in it, or he kind of looked at it and went, oh, I don't know, and he got all depressed about it. And I said, well, don't worry about that. Just let's shoot sketches and you know, like the bollocks and get stuff yeah, done. Yeah. And uh, so we started doing that. So then, in a short space of time, we compiled about fifteen minutes of material, and he used to bring it to comedy clubs and stick on a projector and show it. Oh, so fifteen test minutes, her. whatever. And they'd people would laugh and not laugh and point out stuff, and used to get feedback that way. And then, by another stroke of good fortune, <clears throat> Green Ink from Belfast, the production company, were in Dublin to 
talk to somebody else, I don't know who it was, about another show, and James Goldsbury, who was a friend of mine, a comedian, uh, managed to give them the CD or the DVD that we had. Okay. And they liked that. And then they, they came back. They came back and met us about a month later and then commissioned it as yeah. a pilot for a Channel 4 series of pilots. They had this idea called Comedy Lab in Channel 4 a yeah. bunch of years ago where they'd commission six separate pilots of comedy shows and based on feedback and okay. based on their own rating, mm. they would make a series out of one of them. Okay, that, that happened with the Hardy books as well, wasn't it? There was kind of some kind of a, a I don't know. project thing where yeah, they commissioned a few people to try and then... Oh, based yeah, on, yeah, yeah, I remember something like that. So again, So similar. that happened in the, in the UK at first. So okay. You know the old story, like, I mean, <laughs> something happens in the UK. In the UK... Yeah, it'll be... <laughs> or to you going, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> What the fuck? Ring him up. <laughs> Put out that cigarette and ring him. So like, the next thing, Dave's back in favour with them because they're going, oh, that's very interesting you're doing that and there was all those Irish comics with you. Okay. Do you want to have another look at your pilot? So they took his old... The old pilot. pilot. And, and all of a sudden... They extracted was... a bit out of it about alcohol and then we made a pilot of the Savage Eye out of his... Some of the sketch work he had done about alcohol and alcohol abuse and the Irish relationship with alcohol. Yeah. So... He called the show, he called that episode, Why Are the Irish So Addicted to Alcohol or Why Are the, Whatever. Mm -hmm. And that became a pilot which was put in on another project that RTE were doing called Project Ha Ha, which was the like, same as Comedy Lab, different pilots of different shows, yeah. and the best one would get, get commission. commission. So that happened with Savage Eye. Right. So, that's so then the that was 2008, 2009. We made the first one in the pilot in 8, the first series in 09. Second series, we made it in 10, but it didn't come out till 11. The third series, we made it... We made it directly after the first, the second series went out, we went straight into... It was like two years solid, straight into working on the third one. And the third one was broadcast in 12, and the last one took a little bit longer, that was 14. And then they, did, 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 the, did you stop writing, or did RT kind of just say... I think... No, I think we came to the end of it, because... Okay. We'd gotten, we ended up getting back around to stuff we'd started with. So it was kind of time to... You probably knew yourselves, yeah, which I think is a good place period, to be, I mean, not to try and it, drag. 2008, October, uh, kind of autumn 2008 to summer of 14. Okay. Like a straight, yeah, yeah. straight through, really. And out of all of those shows, okay, I'm going to guess that The Savage Eye was probably your favourite, but mm -hmm. was there other shows you go, oh, I really loved that character, or was there a favourite character? that you liked throughout those different shows? Um, well, I did a lot of cops, as you know. Yeah. I, I really liked one sketch we did. I really liked lots of the sketches. I mean, we did one about Donegal Gardaí at one point, and um, that was one of the hardest ones to shoot because we just couldn't stop laughing. Okay. And I was like, <laughs> it was just Dave going, well, the suspect probably came up the road and he probably, and this, he went into this kind of zombie zone going, he probably saw the blood mixed in with the water and he, <laughs> And he just went off like this. And then I'd go off like that. And, and not easy to keep that straight. Not easy to keep a straight face for that. Especially when everything's quiet in a, in a sh on a set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's extremely hard to... It's just that deathly silence. Yeah. You're there. And uh, not, like, uh, would you have ever liked to be in a guard? Because you've played the role so probably, many times. Yeah, probably. You I find myself one? checking people's... <laughs> Car attacks. I do, yeah. I see it. I go, oh, that's how I did it. Uh, and you've got stopped by guards that kind of say, do the do the yeah, skit, yeah. is it? Cops that go see you and they recognise you from yeah. thing and they go, oh, no, no. <laughs> guards like midnight. So you, could you speed now and they just let you off because well, you do the skit? Well, yeah. You don't have to reveal this they on the show. Care. It's, if the thing is, I mean, <laughs> it happened a few times. It happened a few times and happened in cop shops where cops go, Jesus, your man, do the voice. <laughs> and people behind going, hey, will you fucking hold up? <laughs> Shut up, you. Do the voice. That happened a lot. I well believe it. And then, the thing I found the funniest was the cops that stopped me that hadn't seen that weren't into the show mm. but just had seen my head <laughs> in a uniform <laughs> and just thought I was a cop oh right when and you're you, a fella said to me when I was, you're, you're on the job aren't you I said what he said you're, 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 you're a guard you're a guard aren't you yeah, yeah. I was going no, no not <laughs> he's going alright I thought I'd seen you you probably saw it on an ad or something Some, somewhere and just his brain oh, yeah, clicked the two together and apart from all the TV roles that you've done, you've obviously been on big screen as well. And to be honest, when I was kind of reading up before this, 
a couple of great movies that I spotted that I had didn't know of. One called Hector, mm-hmm. and the other one, The Man Who Invented Christmas. Yeah. So it was a real all-star cast in that. Uh, Santa Claus, he invented Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, uh, yeah, The Man Who Invented Christmas is a story about... Charles uh, Dickens. Charles Dickens' earlier life. Right, and oh, when he was oh, writing A Christmas Carol. I, I think so, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, that was really interesting. I played, uh, I played a guard in that as well. Okay. An English guard. Keeps going back. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. All that. And uh, that was good. And then the Hector one was a really nice film about a homeless dude living between hostels here and there and always goes back to the same hostel at Christmas. And that was with Peter Mullen. I was quite starstruck, actually, in that one because right. I was playing opposite Peter Mullen and Keith Allen, okay. who I would have yeah. watched as a kid because I'd been an avid com- fan of English comedy. Mm. He was comic strip. Yes, of course. Him and Richard Stenn and... Uh, Rick Mail, Ed Edmondson, they were all comic strip. Jennifer Saunders, Don so French. Grew watching these I grew up watching him. Acting. And there he was. In the, you know. A bit starstruck, so we yeah. were even doing yeah. your lines up. Yeah, yeah I was that. kind of just really, I, I, had to, I had to really shake myself yeah, yeah. on the day at times, kind of going, Jesus, he done. <laughs> off again. And then do these characters and then go off and have a cup of tea with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And would you like to do more movies? Is that something you'd really try to try yeah. and get into more? I'm or are you going to no, keep the comedy? Oh, well, I'd like to do anything now because I haven't done anything for a long time. <laughs> Jeez. Which leads me on yeah. brilliantly to the next question. So, lockdown, obviously someone in your world, I presume it was more or less complete stop and shut. Stop, yeah, and then I didn't mind the stop and shut bit so much, but I'm getting really annoyed with the, we're going to, we're going to open again, we're going to open again. No, we're not opening yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because our world, the live world, is so tied up with the pub world and the restaurant world as yeah. well, because there's been a lot of sh- stuff we did in restaurants over the years too, and they would be an ideal place to kind of start it off again. Mm. But it's all just keeps falling back down. Start and stop, start and, it's, and stop. It's awful. And uh, they're talking about, I was just thinking of a stupid joke earlier. They're talking about all these kind of cases coming out of football matches, okay. crowds and stadiums. Like, that's not a third wave, that's a Mexican wave. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first live on the Sligo show. And uh, so obviously, we know you in uh, many vices, but you're also a brilliant impersonator. Wow. Any, any go-to character you no, love doing? No, I haven't got... I only, You're a good I, Jerry Adams always. If well, I've done the Jerry Adams for years and I'm kind of a bit fed up with it, really, but yeah. I suppose he is too. But uh, <laughs> I kind of talk to myself a lot of the time. You know, I don't talk to myself as any particular person. Okay. I just, when I'm in Palace of I'll be going, Jesus Christ Almighty, <laughs> just, uh, look at the state of that. Now, what did I say to you about the like of that? No. Yeah. So you yeah, see no, something in the village no, and you just start making this conversation. Going, ah, Jesus Christ, yeah, that kind of thing there. Yeah, yeah. And anywhere I go, I kind of just tend to... Uh, I have a habit of saying Dublin street signs in a Dublin accent in my yeah. head when I'm walking around. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yours fairly similar. Well, John... Uh, Ballast Street signs. Street signs. Main I'll Street. I'll that. <laughs> that's too it. many. That's it. So if you add anything upcoming, I know there's a weird question. But well, are you working on any writing, any new projects or any TV movie No, I'm, I'm not. I'm the, the only thing I'd like to plug is that we're, even though we haven't got a bar in the Hawkswell, mm. we're doing some shows in the foyer. So okay. Danny O'Brien is coming down yeah. on the July the 29th. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to do Thursday, July 29th. It's, the show is called Fun in the Foyer. Sounds a bit dodgy, but... Um, <laughs> So we're going to do that on July 29th. That's a short enough show. The tickets are on sale now. Uh, I think it might be 15 euro. I'm not exactly right, sure That won't that. matter. I think people are bursting it's, to get out. Yeah, so it's only, unfortunately, no bar, but okay. it's going to be a short enough show. I think it's about an hour and 15 tops. Okay. There's going to be, because you were on a, a, a workshop thing that I did about writing, I've done a few of them. So there's one or two of the people from... The workshops coming in oh, to do great. short so spots, to do a real short five minutes yeah. spots in the show as well, and Danny, and it'll all be done and dusted in an hour and fifteen. Good. And we've got another one on the second of September. September, so Which July twenty ninth and September second. And they're on Hawkswell.com, obviously. Carl Spain is doing the that. second of September. And one other thing that I meant to mention, and you asked me about uh, films, mm. is and I sent you actually. Uh, it came. It crossed my mind last minute before I came in here. Um, I sent you the link to the trailer. There's a film that I'm in, short, small part. Yeah. It's called The Bright Side. It's about a comedian as well. Um, what's her name? The place them right main role, Gwenda. I can't remember. Okay. But it's a good. It's a good movie. It's getting a bit of because of the pandemic. It got kind of pushed back and pushed back, but it's getting a proper release on August twentieth. August twentieth. Okay. And it's called The Bright Side. The Bright Side. And 
uh, it's a good film. It's a good flick. Okay. And it's good fun. So, so check that one lots out. Lots for people to watch. Yeah, check yeah, out yeah, film. Yeah. yeah. Well, John, look, uh, you've been uh, an immense comedian throughout your years and great for Sligo and like uh, on a personal level Up without, without you I don't think my comedy festival would have been as successful as it was so we roll on hopefully we might have some more gigs coming in the, in the near yeah. future as well so it's been a pleasure having you thanks, thanks so much for your time thanks, coming man. in and we'll talk to you soon my pleasure thank you so now we're going to go to our local business slot and this week I dropped in this time to a shop we're in, really into a building to Edel in a lovely shop there at Market Cross called All Things Natural so have a look at this I'm Del from All Things Natural. Come on inside. Okay, so what we have here is essential oils, carrier oils, your cards from scenes of Sligo and Leitrim, and handmade Fed cards. Picture frames, and these cards can be framed also as a gift. Over in this area, then, we have your natural deodorants, skincare sanitary products, soaps, which goes down so well, uh, as you can see. Then we have the men's section, and we have more lovely natural products from Ole Gang Ora from Common. We try and highlight a lot of Irish products here at All Things Natural. So we have your bath range, dental range, shampoo and conditioner, which also can be refilled here at All Things Natural. Okay, so this is our refill section where you can come with your empties from home. We're trying to reduce the plastic waste in Sligo. So we have everything from washing up liquid, all-purpose cleaners, floor, toilet, laundry and personal hygiene of hand, shampoo, body conditioner. We also have it in the bottles. We promote with Lilies here, which is a Connemara-based company and we do a selection of toilet rolls and other little bits and pieces. Over here is our household items, uh, Lynchin ceramics from Mara Hamilton and just all your little bits and pieces for your household. Over here then we have our Faith in Nature, so you can come with your body wash, shampoo, conditioner and we also promote a lot of gift sets for any budget. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in here sometime soon. You can catch us on Facebook and Instagram and also on our www.allthingsnatural.ie. Thank you. Thanks again to Edel at All Things Natural. And as I said, that's at uh, Market Cross, just where Coach and I used to be actually. So if you're looking for where it is, and I think it's a great idea that she has there about reducing waste and plastic. So remember, uh, we are looking for your... Uh, recommendations on what to do with the kids this summer so if there's anything local whether it's free or paid or maybe just something nice to go and see let us know in the comments we'd love to plug as many local activities and businesses as we can and now we're going to go straight in to our entertainment news with Karen Gordon Hello everyone Karen Gordon here from Pop-Up Theatre Sligo and the Star Factory with your entertainment update The Corja Festival kicks off this Saturday the 3rd of July with a fantastic visual exhibition called Far In, Far Out. Far In, Far Out is an exhibition with local artists whereby they take over empty units in Sligo Town to show how we can reimagine and reconsider our collective future as we emerge from lockdown. Be sure to check out any of the exhibitions if you're in town this weekend. Sligo Walking Tours also continued their Dark Tales Walking Tours which take place from the Riverside Hotel every Saturday evening from 8 to 9.30 p.m. Booking is essential, and remember you don't have to be from out of town to avail of these tours. They tell tales of loads of stories that happened in Sligo that most of us don't even know. So make sure you book in, have a great evening, and book in somewhere nice outdoors for some dinner afterwards. The Model Island opened an exhibition entitled I Build My Own Island by Alison Pilkington on the 10th of July. This exhibition explores Alison's very own connections to Sligo. And given that the theme this week is family activities, I have to mention that the Star Factory, my very own group, have very limited spaces on our morning classes for musical theatre. Every Saturday we have three hour classes, music, singing, dancing, acting, arts and crafts and more. The classes run from 10am to 1pm and we run right through to the 27th of November 
where we will do a fantastic big band full orchestra Disney concert with the Sligo Academy of Music. So be sure to check out the Star Factory on Facebook for more information. And don't forget to check out all of our fabulous markets in Sligo. We have the Strand Hill People's Markets on Sundays and we have the Rathcormac Market and the Farmer's Market on Saturdays. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Take care and I will see you next week. Bye. And thanks again to Karen for, for our entertainment section and also to Cloda at Sligo Hub who helps us provide all the entertainment news. And don't forget, if you want to listen to another podcast in town, Karen has her own podcast, Musy Gals. So if you like all things musicals, check out that podcast, Musy Gals with a G. So just before we go, again, we just have to say thanks to everyone. Uh, it's amazing we even have a live show. We didn't even have a Facebook page this morning. So thanks for everyone who's come back, liked the page and who's watching. We're so appreciative of all that. But a few little mentions locally. Uh, obviously, everyone is saying we want to support the arts after the last year and a half. Well, there's a few different organizations in town that are trying to fundraise money for their events. So uh, the Sligo Baroque Festival is trying to bring over an amazing uh, orchestra from London. And they're doing a funded campaign on their page. So to bring over this orchestra to perform this amazing piece. So even if you might think oh I've never gone to that go and check out that festival it's in September they have some free gigs as well or family stuff so check that out and at the moment as I said if you go to their Facebook page they have a funded campaign Kieran Quinn is celebrating 10 years of his team nights and like what a wonderful uh, organisation that is to have in this town and all the nights of entertainment they've provided so he's bringing out a CD and books and there's a funded campaign if you go to Kieran's Kieran Quinn Music's Facebook page you better find out all the details there if you want to support them the Yates Society are also fundraising to keep their society going and their building running so be sure to check out them all of these are all on their Facebook pages uh, Sligo Rovers have a big European match coming up but unfortunately they won't be able to have lots of fans but yet they still need to get the revenue to be able to send the team away so they're doing a special virtual stream and I know there's a raffle at half time so go and support that because they really do need the, all the help they can get when they can't have the crowds and let me see one more St John's football club out there in Carrow Road they also have a fundraiser going on to build an Astro pitch and one last one I have to say well done to Brian Kerrigan there he's out in Ocean FM he raised nearly or over 24,000 for the Friends of Sligo University Hospital recently he'd done uh, uh, multiple hikes up Ben Bulbin in honour of his brother so again if you want to support the arts and sports, you know, go and check out those Facebook pages and give them any support you can. And before the last one as well is the Sligo Way podcast, which is a brilliant sports podcast locally. They're going to have comedian Owen Colgan on the show this week. So check out those guys. Not only are they great crack, they're actually brilliant at their knowledge of local sports. So that's the Sligo Way podcast. Check out their next episode upcoming. So finally, again, thanks to John, our guest, to Edel from All Things Natural, who is our local business feature. As always, Karen on entertainment, Alana on sport, and Jessica on the news. Uh, Claude at Sligo Hub as well. Also, always, always uh, Connie and Mark here at the Riverside for living, letting us have the space. Brian, behind the cameras from Pixel Productions. And lastly, to you, and especially of all weeks, you, for everyone who has really liked the page. We hated having to plague you. Uh, but thanks so much. It, it was a great boost to kind of go, people actually really enjoy what we're doing. So we're, we're grateful. And as I said earlier on at the beginning of the show, it doesn't cost anything to get mentioned. There's no sponsors. There's no budget here. Please let us know what's going on and we'll give it a plug if we can. We'll see you next week at 8 o'clock. Local musician, artist, multiple, multi-talented man Peter Cran is going to be with us. We have a few little ideas he wants to discuss. So we'll see you next Thursday on our Facebook page if it's not taken down in the meantime. 8 o'clock every Thursday. And also each week our videos are put up on our YouTube channel which is also the Sligo Show. Good night. God bless. Thanks very much. <laughs>